Hey everybody, welcome to Dad Talk. Today we are live in Tampa, Florida at Turning Point USA's Student Action Summit and we're sitting here with Mr. Jack Bosebeck. Jack, how you doing? Doing great. It's wonderful to be here. I'm loving Tampa. We're actually leaving in a couple hours and I'm like, don't make me go back to DC, but you know, we gotta go. We gotta, we gotta go fight the fight right in the belly of the beast. Absolutely, and part of that, you know, fight is making sure that we got strong families in the country. And we was talking a little bit before. Well, that's, we came not, on the that's not just part of the fight. Strong families mm -hmm. is the fight. There you it go. Is Absolutely. the fight. It's everything comes back to the family structure, and that is why when you see these forces of of secular America, materialistic America, big left, all the big government, all the rest of it, they want to step in and take over the role of the mother and the father in society. They want to be your highest authority. They don't want moms and dads running their families, raising their kids as they see fit in their traditions and in their cultures as it's been done for thousands of years, right? Because they understand that if you want to atomize society, you've got to break down the family structure. Absolutely, you know, and, and moms and dads both play that role in the house, but it seems like with the, the fatherless issue that we've been seeing in the country, dads have been kind of thrown to the side. And we was talking a little bit before you came on about, you know, what a dad provides to his children. Could you speak a little bit about what you were saying a second So, ago? you know, and I, I say this as a dad myself, and, and, and this is biblical, but it's also traditional, and it, it, it just goes back to show that human nature is immutable, right? Right? Human nature doesn't change. You look at people 2,000 years ago when you're reading the Bible, you look at people today, man, we are up to the same old stuff we've always been doing. And the role of parents, you need the mother and the father because you need that balance, right? You need the nurturing, but then you also need the boundaries and the discipline and the protection of a father that they that, that presents, right? The mothers run the house, I believe me. My wife, she runs our house, right? But for fathers, it's, it's kind of looking out for what's ahead. It's looking out to what's going on with the family, what kind of potential challenges could be down the road for the family. That's what a father's doing. So you have that balance, and you this, this is borne out in all the studies that show this, that when children go through a family that has that balance, right, the outcomes are always better than when you're missing out on that. And that's, and that's not for me to dump on single, fa single family households. Like I completely understand right. things happen, right? Yeah. Things happen. What I am saying though is as a society, we should be promoting programs and promoting mm -hmm. different social abilities to get back to where we used to be. That You should be able to raise a family on a single income. You should be able to do that. You know, Jack, what I love that you're talking about is these roles, how the mother runs the household and the dad is outside protector and discipline and things like that. But it really seems like society has focused more on removing the dad and oh, keeping yeah. the kids with mom. Oh, yeah. Why do you think that society is focused on let's keep them with mom versus let's keep them with dad? Well, because I think that when it comes to fathers specifically that, you know, I, I just remember for myself growing up that, you know, the highest authority that we have, right, in the house was, it always came down to this, don't make me tell your father. Yeah. Do you want me to tell your father when <laughs> he gets home? The minute that line comes out, it's like, oh, I, I'm, I, and you, I'm just done. I'm like, well, we don't need to bring dad into this. So like, what do you, right. and it's, it's that you, as a kid, you have that. And like my, my dad, and you know, you know, now that I look back on it, I'm like, you know, kind of think of it, nothing ever came of that, but it was, <laughs> it was just the phrase that it was under, there was the understanding that if dad gets involved, it's done. We're, 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 we're over. Right. And you know, me being me, you know, I may have had my moments of talking back a little bit, teenage rebelliousness, what can you say? But when it really comes down to it, it's that, uh, that your father plays that role of the ultimate authority, right, within the household. And then father, that's, you know, and, you know, we're raised Catholics, so of course, that's under Catholic teachings and, and, and how that all works. But so when you remove that, it's not that you don't have any authority, but what's interesting is the authority becomes what? It becomes your schools, which have become increasingly uh, focused on government programs, government agendas, and it becomes larger government in and of itself. And it's almost that government wants to take that father role away and push for us. And you see this in media, by the way, where the dads are the butt of every joke. Yeah. There's always are, like yeah. the stupid father figure, every commercial, the dad's dumb, the dad just grunts and scratches himself and drinks beer and watches the game with the guys and that's it that's all they want you to think masculinity is and that's not true that's actually a false masculinity so you actually have to get to the point where if you want strong fathers you actually have to have strong men and you have to teach people what truthful masculinity is and it's not just 
drinking beer and eating bacon and watching the game. Like, this is your five, sure, fine. But that's not what it means to be masculine. It's about having that authority. It's about having discipline. It's about being the final arbiter for your family, the decider, the person who comes up and says, this is what we're gonna do as a family. And that's a lot of responsibility that rests on your shoulders. But it's also something that you do, it's, it's you know, being a dad, it's one of those things where you're in the middle of it, you know, every day you might be thinking, oh my gosh, now we gotta do this, and now we gotta do that, and there's no time for this. And then you step back and you have a minute to yourself and you think, God, I love being a dad. I love every second of this. Yeah, man. And, you know, speaking about veterans, I know that's an issue that you're very passionate about. We got some of our guys going and fighting wars overseas. They come back talking about the incentives that break up the family. Family court is definitely a very big aspect of that that's not talked about as much. These guys go and fight for our country, come back home. Wife's then took off. She's got the kids. And quite frankly, so, right, the Jody problem is a massive problem. And for all my veterans out there, you know who Jody is. is. We know who Jody is. (laughs) And... The military knows about it, but what do they do about it? And that's the they thing. do nothing. They do, they nothing. do nothing for the yeah. vets. They do nothing for the men on deployment, and in some cases, the women on deployment. Because this is right. this actually goes, goes both, both ways. ways. This absolutely goes both yep. ways. And yet, you see, and the military knows about it. They don't do anything about it. The courts know about it. Everything is completely one-sided against the fathers. And if, if you've read any or watched any of Cassie Jay's work on this, you know, I yeah. think she's absolutely oh, yeah. fantastic on what she's done. Really opened my eyes to a lot of what goes on in that that part of our country it's completely one-sided and so you even got to the point now where and i've seen this where if a father is a veteran if a veteran goes into one of these family courts Mm -hmm. and they say oh you were in combat you were on a combat mission and you've got ptsd Mm -hmm. therefore because you went and served your family right because you signed on the dotted line to go and excuse me to serve your country you went out and served your country you deployed you went on that deployment now they can take your kids away in court and they're going to use that against you so you want to talk about they talk about the red pill that's cassie j's yep. thing that they, that's a, that is a wake-up call to the completely backwards system that exists in this country backward system of incentives look i understand ptsd i think ptsd is real it but is. at the same time the answer to that is not to take someone's kids away The answer is get somebody the help they need. Get them on the right foot, and you've got to take care of veterans when they come back. Having them with their families and having them with their kids, that is national security. That's right. Love it, man. You took the words right out of my mouth. Jack, man, I appreciate you coming and speaking with us so much. Uh, Tell everybody where they can keep up with you. Yeah, keep up with me, humanevents.com. And then very soon, I believe in September of this year, we're actually going to be launching a new show, Turning Point Live, uh, with yours truly every single day. All right. Hey, Jack. Thank you so much, my man. Appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. Hey, everybody. Eric Carroll here. Thank you for tuning in to another exciting episode of Dad Talk Today. While we fight for you, we would ask for you to please help fight for us. Like, subscribe to our channel, and ring that bell so you get notifications every time we go live. There's also Super Chats, patreon.com slash dadtalktoday, and other ways you can support our channel. Thank you for being here, and we will see you next time.